right, 25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Right now, the temperature looks pretty nice out there, and the forecast is, you know, up north, it's snowing. It's going to snow. It looks like they're, they've got some weather. We don't have that kind of a, a thing to deal with, but in the summer, we definitely do. Uh, it gets hot, and we like to stay cool, and that's why climate control is so important. If you're a regular listener to WOCA, you know that our phone number is the Climate Control Source Hotline. That's because the guys and ladies over at Climate Control Mechanical Services sponsor our phone line, which is 622-9622. And it's important that you know the number if you want to call in today and ask some questions about air conditioning and or heating or anything related. Uh, Russ Letbetter is in the studio. John Schulte and Josh Tackett are in the studio today. And again, if you want to call to ask a question, just call the WOCA Climate Control source hotline 352-622-WOCA and in the course of the show we'll also give you the number for climate control and mechanical services directly all right now i did my little intro good morning guys how you all doing good morning good. we're doing great how are you this is is this just like a, a downtime for you guys with the weather the way it is it's not cold not hot it's kind of, <coughs> kind of yeah, in the middle it's a little bit of a lull but we're still staying busy yeah, yeah. Uh, our, our company does commercial work as well so that kind of keeps us busy. That, of course. Yes. And in fact, you do the hospitals, don't you? That is true. All the hospitals in town? You, you're the uh, guy? We do work at, yeah, MRMC and ORMC. Wow, wow. West Marion. And, and obviously that's important to keep it cool, but also <laughs> to keep the air clean. I think we touched on that last time you were here. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, hospitals uh, have very high standards when it c- comes to air quality, so yeah, we help them with that as well. Russ, could you pull that mic closer sure, to you? Sure, absolutely. They're, they're designed so that they only get that sound right in front of us. Gotcha. Huh? Yeah. Testing, testing. <laughs> uh, has, has, how did the, the uh, video go? I mean, did, did you have family watching the video? Let me make sure we get yeah. it. Okay, yeah? Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> Actually, I had friends in Hawaii. I moved here from Hawaii about th- four years ago. Yeah. And uh, their comments were, boy, you look a little chunky now. <laughs> I told them it was a camera. It's not me. It's ah. an Ads 15. Now, what was the comment we heard, Robin? They say you look like, um, oh, who's the actor? Who's the actor? Oh, uh, uh. Uh, Elmer Fudd. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. The guy from uh, the train movie. The, the, they broke out of jail. Robin, who's that guy that he looks like? George Clooney. Oh, George Clooney. Do you yeah. get that a lot? Hey, yeah, I look like him. I just don't have his money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm working on it. Uh, all right, we won't be silly. <laughs> so, to, to, so right now, you, the, the well, is there any advice to us uh, as air conditioner consumers? Well, I mean, one of the one of the things I did want to mention, I just got this uh, email a few days ago that the federal government has uh, extended the tax credit program. You can get up to $500 rebate on split system and package unit replacement. Split system being what most houses have, but package units are usually for the mobile home, where it's a single unit. Um, but you can get uh, up to $300 on 16 sear, uh, $300 on heat pumps, up to 15 sear. So it, basically, 15 sear and higher, there, there are tax credits available now. Really? So if you're thinking about getting a replacement uh, give us a call and we can come out and take a look and uh, give you a give you a quote oh wow and and is that a replacement not to repair that's, that's re- correct that's a replace okay and, and I'm guessing sometimes replacing is probably more affordable than repair it depends <coughs> the electric bill would be cheaper too right absolutely and that's I, why the government wants you to do it right the higher the sear rating the more efficient it is and the lower your utility bills how do we know what that SEER rating is? What does that stand for, by the way? Seasonal Energy efficient Efficiency Ratio. Basically, it's how energy efficient the unit is. Um, some equipment will have it on it, but most equipment, we, we actually have a book called the Preston Guide that we can look it up, the serial number, and it'll tell us what, what, our, what, uh, what SEER rating it is. Somebody's phone just did something. Yeah, that's mine. So <laughs> that's yeah, I heard something in my head, so I wasn't so sure what yeah. it was. Uh, Josh, nice to meet you. you. This is your first time here. Yes. And yes. and how long have you been working with air conditioners? <coughs> um, probably around five years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and is it has it changed a lot in five years? It seems like everything's changing. Um, <coughs> way the technology changes in air conditioning, I mean, you're never going to stop learning. It's always something new, something better. Um. From the when I started till now, I've seen a lot of systems change their style. Um, you know, it's kind of like a car. You know, every every five years they're coming out with a new model. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like air conditioner. You know, you like a carrier. They have a their high efficiency is going to be called an infinity system, which you know when you look at it from 2004, it you know doesn't look like it does in 2012 or 2013. It's just really cha- they all change their style a little bit. You know. Do you, do you guys test the um, the air tightness of a home 
to make sure there's not leaks causing you know to have on you know a higher bill than you would normally have yeah that's part of our is that something you do it's agreement yeah we actually when we're doing a pma our preventive maintenance agreement we actually get up in the attic or behind or under the home and check the duct work we check the boots to make sure they're sealed because you can lose up to 20 30 percent of your efficiency if you have leaking duct work so yes it is part of something we do on every every preventive maintenance agreement john i wanted to ask one of your questions and since you haven't said anything let me ask you something there, there was a story. <laughs> oh, that mic needs. To, let me turn that mic on. There you go. Now I can hear. You. Uh, uh, the there was a story the other day about uh, it was local too about uh, people stealing the the copper or the whole air conditioning unit. Is there a way to prevent? Is there a cage or some kind of device that can? Uh, cages go to go around them, and also a lot. Cage. That you can put a <laughs> like up under the condenser. So yeah. if it's moved, then it'll set an alarm off. I'm, ne- I'm never home. What would that alarm do? Just wake up the dog? Like some of them are oh, they know, ca- call tied the police? into ADT or something like that. Oh. And it would set it off. <coughs> what you can would have you? Audible, you can have strobe, and you can have it dial your alarm company and the police department. What would you recommend? Is there one that you think is the better choice? Um, we use a product called Watchdog. Um, we have it on a couple of the churches that we do work with. Um, we've had no complaints. Um We've had no issues with the units themselves. Uh, company's great to work with. So an alarm is preferable <coughs> to a cage or some kind of a locked-up area. Yeah, or something? I mean there there are the cages, and the cages basically bolt to the the, the concrete pad that the condensing unit sits on. Uh-huh. Um, is it foolproof? No, but it would definitely slow someone down. Um, because with, they with, could cut with, through it. Yeah, no? I mean basically it's metal, and they could cut through it with an alarm system, especially if it has a dialer. You're going to notify the police, the alarm company. So that would probably be a bigger deterrent than a cage. Oh wow! Yeah, and, and, and is it visible? The or is there a sign on it that says? Uh, we we it comes with a sticker that says that this this has an alarm system on it, but uh, you don't see anything. Basically, it uses uh, pressure switches. So if somebody cuts the freon, or the the copper line, you lose mm-hmm. you lose pressure. It would set off an alarm. Is it a bigger problem than uh, the news media makes it out to be? It seems as far as people stealing. Air conditionings, or well, or the copper from them. It's sa- it sounds like some of them weren't being stolen, but they were taking the copper from them. Well, yeah, and and uh, actually, there, from what I understand, there's uh, laws in place where if anybody's selling copper to a recycling uh, company, they have to pr- provide um, ID, whether it be the driver's license or. So I'm not really sure how well that's working. I'm sure with every uh-huh. like everything, there's a way around it. Right. But uh, but that's what happens. They they steal the units for the copper. Yeah, it's, not, well, now I think uh, you have to be a business owner. You got to have a license. You know, like I like if say I were to go up there and say, hey, you know, I want to scrap this copper. They're going to be like, well, you, you know, if it's anything that deals with air conditioning, they're going to ask for like a license number or something. You know, proving that you're like an owner of a business. Oh, okay. And I think that's what's starting to cut down on uh, the scrapping, stealing of the units because people are, you know, it's hard for them to do it. You know. I mean, so if I bought a if I bought a new air conditioner. And and you guys would say, what do you want me to do with the old one? Mm-hmm. Is do you sometimes l- allow me to keep it? And I, cause maybe I'll say, you know, I'll keep it. I'll tear it apart. And I'll bring the copper for recycling. I'm gonna be setting myself up for a hard time, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to keep it, that's fine. But uh, I, in the three years I've been with the company, I don't think any nobody wants to keep them. No, because no. there's EPA regulations. You got to reclaim the refrigerant, put it in a tank. You got to write numbers down. It's got to be all on a sheet, you know, uh-huh. done a certain way because if it's not, you know, reported or stuff like that, the EPA's going to come after you, you're going to get fined. Hmm. You know, there's just a lot of things that tie into it and that's why most business owners are, they're making it, you, that, that they're the ones that have to do it. Uh, we do have a phone call. Let's go to the phone. Remember, you're all invited to be part of this conversation. Ask questions. Just uh, give some thoughts that you have. The number is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline, 622-9622. And, uh, again, in the studio, Russ Letbetter, John Schulte, and Josh Tackett from Climate Control Mechanical Services. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. I have a, Good morning. I have a question for you guys. I have a, an older system on my home. It's about 25 years old. It's a heat pump style system. And it's working fine, but I was eventually going to replace the... I wonder if I could just replace the outside unit and leave the heat pump, I mean, the, the uh, air handler in, in place. So the air handler's up in the attic. Can you just replace just the outside part? No. 
Um, now they have to be matched units. They have a AHRI, AHRI rating before the county will even give us a permit uh, to do the replacement. It has to be a match system. Uh, more than likely, your system has R22 Freon in it. Uh -huh. um, uh, the new systems come with 410. There are there are something called dry units out there, and it's kind of, it's kind of a gray area where you can. There are some companies that will replace just the condensing unit. Yeah. But it's still uh, it's kind of a <coughs> loophole right now, and it's not something we do. I see. And I, actually, I've never even tried to get a permit on, on a dry system, so I don't even know. I guess it would be considered a repair, not a, not a replacement. But uh, we, we tend to avoid it. We, uh, we do match sets and pull permits and do everything by the book. I see. And how are you going to get that thing out of the attic? Uh, well, Josh, sitting uh -huh. next to me, used to be one of our installers. He's now a tech. But uh, sometimes we actually have to tear the unit apart, you know, actually tear the car, the cabinet apart, fold it, and then bring it through the, uh, the uh, crawl space. But uh -huh. we, we do then, attic installations. And, you know, honestly, we've, we've moved attic units into the garages as well. Yeah, right. So if you get the new unit up, up there, you have to take it apart first and then reassemble it up in the attic? It depends. It depends how big the opening is. When we come out to look at a system, we'll, we'll measure the crawl space. We'll, we'll make sure, you know, to see what we have to do to get the unit in and out. Okay. Um, I guess I'm just going to leave the system run then until, until it fails. It seems to work, work just fine. Yeah, well, give us a call when you start having problems. We'll, we'll take care of you. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. All right. You're welcome. Very interesting question. Wow, that sounds like an awkward place yeah. for it to be. Uh, we do have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, man. Good morning. See, uh, well, what, I just hope this ain't a stupid question, but why, why is it copper all the time? Can't they do it with a different metal? Hmm. Well, <clears throat> they have... Um, like the the new evaporator coils that are in the systems, they are aluminum, but yeah. Um, no, they don't really do line sets because when you push them in a chase, I mean, copper's a little bit, you know, it gives a little bit, but it's not as soft as aluminum. It, oh, you know, okay. you got to shove them in chase pipes and stuff like that. So yeah. I mean, if you're shoving aluminum in there, it's gonna kink, and you know, you're not gonna get good refrigerant flow. So okay. they they try to stick with copper, you know. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, on the uh, heat exchanger. Uh, uh, would a higher sear give you more heat? No, not necessarily. On a heat pump, it's not. The higher sear is not going to give you any more heat. You're gonna. It's going to be the system's designed to give you a certain amount of heat. However, you know you can get a bigger heat strip. You know okay. that's that's going to give you more heat. But the, I mean, you're losing efficiency right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's no heat pump that is more gives you more heat than another heat pump. Uh, no, 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 no. They're going to give you the same amount of heat. I mean, but when it gets lower than 32 degrees, usually they're not going to be working that great anyway. Your heat yeah. strips are going to be kicking in. Yeah. Can you have uh, strips uh, added to the already existing uh, system? Most yes. Most come with emergency heat strips. Right. But yes, you can add them later. Okay. Uh, would you? Would they be put into a different location, uh, uh, or or they have to be in the uh, in the unit itself? I'm pretty sure you'd have to probably get a bigger size, and then you'd have yeah. to check your wire size, and you might have to upsize your wiring. Again, yeah. it becomes more of a hassle than what it's worth. Really? I mean, if you wanted more heat, I'd call the gas company and put a gas furnace in. Yeah. That's yeah. probably the best bet. Yeah, if I'm almost thinking of doing that. Yeah. But uh, okay. Well, thank you for your answers. Oh, well, you're thank welcome. You. Yeah. Okay. Bye now. In a, a duplex, is the air handler, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but the thing that the other gentleman had in his attic, does that sometimes serve both halves? No. no, no. Usually it's going to be designed for one particular, you know, say if someone's got a duplex like a, you know, you got one here, one here. You're going to have the same setup on each side because okay. you got They're two different people that. living there, you know. So two completely separate yes. systems. Okay. I, I don't know why. I, for some reason, see, Robin lives in a duplex. And I, I was under the impression that one time the the blower that's mm -hmm. up in the... Because he was talking about the attic. That's where hers is. It seemed like it went out and both halves were... Well, it could... I mean... that heat. Theoretically, you... you you could put a single system and zone it with two different thermostats, but oh, okay. uh, it's not normal. Not, not normal. normal. Yeah. Not normal. Okay. yeah. Uh, the right. Let's go back to the phone. If you would like to call, by the way, I was just going to say the number is the Climate Control Source Hotline, 622-9622. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. I have a question about uh, permit requirements for air conditioning repair. Okay. 
Okay, we have, in one of our rooms, we have a wall unit. It's really a small window unit, but it's built right into the wall. Okay. It's about the size of your typical microwave oven to mm -hmm. give you, you know, a, a, a reference on it. Right. And what we want to do is we want to take that older one out and put a newer one in that's, you know, much more high efficiency and, you know, put out more heat and, and cold air. But if we do that, are we going to have to get a permit for that little job? Is it a is it what they call a P-TAC or is it actually like a window? Is it like the ones you would get at a hotel room where it goes through the wall? No, it's right like a regular window unit, you know, but it's just got, there's a hole cut in the wall and it's, you know, it's stuck right through the wall. The air no. conditioner's stuck right through the wall. No, I... I uh, I would say no. I, we we've replaced them before for for commercial um, applications. applications, and we've never had to pull a permit. Just to well, be, that's good news. Just <laughs> to be safe, though, uh, you know, if you're in Marion County, it, it'd be worth taking a couple of minutes just to double check. But we don't do a lot of them, but I don't think we've ever had to pull a permit. Okay, thank you. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh, I wouldn't have even thought of that. So, so if we try to do something ourselves, we could. We, we had a, a guest one time who told us you need a permit just to change the front door. You have, to, you have to pay yeah, a uh, like a, a county fee know. or something. I don't know. Maybe I mean maybe you were enlarging a door or adding French doors, possibly. Mm. I don't know. It's kind of out of our realm of, of yeah, permitting. Yeah. So when you when you take <coughs> apart uh, a, a unit in the attic and bring it down, do you? put the new one back up there or do you find a, a more convenient place that seems like a very inconvenient well, place <coughs> technically i mean some some companies will put it back in there they won't even offer a person you know we give the person an option you know hey we found a spot that looks you know pretty easy to service and it's you know going to take less stress off the system right, right if you place it here and the customer's going to be like well yeah that's never thought of that it's a really good idea so your customers don't know. They're going to think, oh, that's how they're designed. They're just supposed to stay up there. If you right, give them the right. option, hey, this is what it's going to cost for replacing it, putting it up in the system, or keeping it and putting it in somewhere new. You right, know, right. It's not that big of a difference. People might do it. And you have another phone call. Good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, uh, gentlemen. Good morning. How's it going? My, my, oh, hanging in there. But uh, <laughs> my point being, uh, uh, you've... You know, people keep putting more and more stuff up in the attic. Uh, I've seen a new home builder put the hot water heater up there, yeah. all the plumbing up there because they use this hose now. It looks like garden hose to me. Right. And uh, to me, that's like asking for trouble. Yeah. Your AC goes out when it's 100 degrees out, mm -hmm. and this unit is up in the attic. Guaranteed, it's close to you know 130 to 150 degrees, you're right and on you're there. expecting a technician to go up there and and uh, do whatever he has to do up there uh, is uh, like insane. I mean, that's uh, you know that's you're you're asking for health problems up there and that kind of heat. Yeah, it it is a it is a concern of ours. I mean, in the middle of the summer. Honestly, if we send a tech out on a call and we don't hear back in 20, 30 minutes, we're normally calling to make sure they're okay. Really? Right. Well, uh -huh. the other thing is, it could be as simple thing as the uh, the uh, drain mm -hmm. for the AC just getting clogged up. What right. happens? That thing overflows. Guess what? Big stain in the ceiling. I don't care if it's the garage or that. It's more likely somewhere in the house, uh, not far from the uh, garage access. But well, even so, the hot water heater, I mean, 50 gallons of water up there, you know, a gallon of water weighs 8.3 something or the pounds, and, and, and uh, you're going to have 50 gallons up there in an attic? I, uh, I, I agree with you. I mean, personally, uh, I would not want anything in the attic of my home. Uh, you know, another thing too is you've got a unit trying trying to remove heat out of the air, and you've got it surrounded by 140 units. <laughs> right, right. uh, to me, I don't think is as as efficient as it should be. And again, uh, we have relocated a lot of um, air handlers out of the attics. And of course, there is additional cost because the ductwork has to be modified. Exactly. But, but we do do it. I mean, we 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 probably do uh, we probably do three or four a year for people. I just can't imagine running plumbing and everything. The hot water heater. Uh, most of this stuff is electric today anyway. I mean, God forbid something really catastrophe, you know, some catastrophe hits 
And then nine times out of ten, when a house gets hit by lightning, it's usually in the roof somewhere. You're right. I mean, holy yeah, right. polecats. And that talk about compounding uh, uh, danger and cost. It's no, unbelievable. I, I agree. Well, anyway, I just was wondering... If you run across any of that, uh, we do. But like I said, if anybody wants them relocated, give us a call. We can do that as well. All right. All right well, sir. thank you guys. Have a good day. <coughs> you too. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Russ, before we run out of time, we got about five minutes. Would you repeat the information about the the, the tax incentives? Sure. And uh, f- federal tax credit program. Uh, here we go. Three hundred dollars for split air conditioning systems, which most homes have. It's sixteen here and higher. There's $300 rebate for split system heat pumps. Now, if it's a heat pump, instead of being 16 sear, it can be 15 sear. There's $300 for package air conditioners. Package air conditioners are usually like what mobile homes have. Uh, 14 sear and higher is 300. Uh, packaged heat pump, 14 sear and higher is 300. And there's a $300 rebate for package gas and electric units, 14 sear and higher. And then there is a $150 rebate if you get a natural gas propane with 95% higher uh, AFU rating. Wow. So, so, and there are other, I mean, you need to check with you. We can help you, but there are local utility companies have rebates for for uh, programmable thermostats. That's $25. I mean, mm-hmm. there, there are things that, you know, they, they want you to reduce your electrical costs. Yeah, really. So we can is, help. Is the information you just read on a website, do you guys have a website? So Actually, uh, just this morning, I asked that uh, it be put on our website. But right now, if you go to uh, www.energy.gov forward slash tax breaks, it's got it all listed there. So that's energy.gov forward slash tax breaks. And it will be on our OcaloAirConditioning.com website probably later today or first thing tomorrow. Tell me a little bit about warranties, guarantees. I, I never know the difference, by the way. Um, something's, let's say I got an air conditioner last year. Mm-hmm. And Uncle Charlie comes over and he says, oh, I know what's wrong. And he opens it up and looks at it and it's still, still not working. Now we call you. Mm-hmm. Is the warranty void because Uncle Charlie was in there? Probably. Yeah. He, yeah. Pro- he probably messed up something, didn't probably. he? Probably. It's a good possibility. Yeah. If you're, if you're having an issue, I mean, mo- most new units come with, it's uh, one-year uh, labor and 10-year parts. Uh-huh. Um, there are extended maintenance con- or extended warranty contracts. You get 10-year labor as well. Uh-huh. They're reasonably uh, affordable. Um, so, and again, uh, you know, PMA agreements, I know I keep saying it, but I really believe in them. We'll come out twice a year, completely check the system. You get four filter changes, and if we see anything that's not right, we fix it on the spot. So saves any major catastrophe later down the road. Do you guys let your own families know that you do this? Because I'm, I imagine this is a problem. Everybody wants you to come over and fix it for free, right? We're everybody's best friend. <laughs> John, Josh are especially. <laughs> uh, if I could say one more thing while on the air, uh, guys, we're growing. I need... Uh, I need to hire five uh, commercial HVAC technicians. Five, wow. Uh, I, we, I run uh, commercial and residential, so if you know of anybody who's honest, hardworking, clean cut, and uh, uh, willing to grow with a company, please have us have them give us a call. Wow. I'd like to talk to them. Well, who's the perfect candidate? Perfect candidate? Yeah. Um, well, we're looking for more commercial HVAC, someone that has some mechanical uh I'm looking for at least five years in the field. Okay. okay. EPA certified, uh, maybe some some specific uh, manufacturer training as well. Wow. And where would they, I mean, obviously they're going to work in Marion County, but does it go beyond Marion County? Yeah. Uh, we go everywhere from North Florida to South Georgia. Um, if you know somebody in the South Georgia or, or, or South Florida area, we have customers down there that we could actually service from remote offices. It wouldn't be necessary to report to Ocala every day. So we're, we're trying to wow. plan our growth. Five so. five positions. And what number do they call for that? 352 uh, Okay, I have that one down already. And is that the same number we call if we need? Absolutely. Like, like for example, we want a new air kit or get it. And yeah. the maintenance, the maintenance contract. Uh, mm-hmm. what, is, what is What are the details on that? <coughs> Well, what we do is we uh, we come out, you know, we go inside your house, we wear our little booties, and um, <laughs> we uh, 
We check out your air handler, we go up in your attic, we check your ducts, make sure nothing's falling apart, nothing's leaking. Um, we'll go outside, we'll wash your outdoor coil, um, clean your drain lines, um, make sure everything's pretty much intact and running and, you well, know, good said, operation. When he says make sure, we, we take readings, uh, we, we take static pressure readings on your duct work, we, you, we actually give you four filters uh, a year, we come out twice a year. You get 15% discount if you do have any major repairs. There's no overtime nights, weekends, and holidays. Uh, and you get priority scheduling if uh, you do have an issue. So if somebody called you right now and started their maintenance agreement with you today, mm -hmm. would you come out tomorrow or this week or something? As and, and, soon as we can get it scheduled, okay. absolutely. And let's say you find that it's really needing a lot of repairs. Does the maintenance contract cover that? I mean, you've never been there before. Does what, well, no, what it does is gives them 15% off. I got you. Okay. And the way we, we have all our, we use flat rate pricing. We don't guesstimate. If it's a condensing motor, it's X amount of dollars. Okay. And there's two columns. There's preventive maintenance customers and non-preventive maintenance customers. There's 15% difference. Ah, okay. So you see what it's going to be. Uh, and we'll give you 15% back discount. Uh, just, just to recap, the number is important. Call us if you if you can't write this down if you're driving, but the number that Russ gave, not only for us as, as residents, as consumers, but also for if you know somebody who might want a job working with climate control and mechanical services, give them a call at 352-291-0185. Sounds like you could live anywhere in the state. Just about. And get that job. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for thank you. educating us on what keeps us comfortable. Thanks for having us. We'll take a little break, and we'll be right back.